Welcome everybody and thank you for joining us today. In this webinar, we will discuss advanced cybersecurity for PubSub applications using Diffusion. If I may introduce myself, my name is Dave Carson and I look after professional services uh, here at Push Technology. I've always worked in IT across a range of capacities and industries. Probably most extensively in ca is capital markets and fintech, uh, where I've worked in all areas of the al algorithmic trading stack. Most recently, last year, I completed an MSc in Applied Cybersecurity, specializing in cryptography for a post-quantum age. So here is today's agenda. Uh, we'll start by briefly looking at the need for incorporating security into your PubSub applications and platform design. Then I'll provide a quick overview of Diffusion. We'll then review the data security with a discussion on how Diffusion can secure your data and control access to it. Following, we'll look at how Diffusion can integrate with existing access control systems. Moving on to application security, we will step through the OWASP 10 and how Diffusion neutralizes the vulnerabilities that it raises. Finally, we will look at how Diffusion secures your data over any network with a review of how it empowers your administrators to react to today's evolving threat landscape. And then we'll close for questions. So why is cybersecurity important? The cost of cybercrime around the world has been increasing year on year. Indeed, last year it was estimated to have costed, uh, cost $6 trillion, and there are reports uh, estimating that it will cost over $10 trillion by the year 2025. It can have a devastating effect on organizations, some even cease operating. It affects private companies, publicly listed companies, and government agencies alike. Furthermore, the damage can be hard to quantify. It could be financial, such as wire fraud. It could be intellectual property stolen, uh, or it could be a data breach. Either way, the consequences are great. And with the amount of inbound connections and internet facing applications continuing to grow apace, the attack surface of all organizations is too great to ignore anymore. Relying upon uh, security through obscurity or network solutions like DMZs are no longer sufficient on their own. Remember, it may not be a human target, targeting your assets, but a malware bot, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Diffusion can help secure your platforms. Diffusion provides fully secure transmission of data over unsecured networks. Real-time access control and fully transparent management with options to define proactive remedial actions if necessary, such as denying or access or changing permissions, broadcasting alerts in real time. And finally, Diffusion also integrates seamlessly with internal or third-party management tools to allow you to use existing tools to manage your user base. This is all whilst enjoying the added benefits of Diffusion, such as security, transparency, auditing, and efficient network utilization. So a quick introduction to Diffusion. Diffusion provides three core functional pillars. There is the Data Gateway API. Uh, this allows data from any source to be published into Diffusion in a real-time, high-performance, consistent fashion. Data is published in a structured model called a topic tree that allows granular control over who can access what data. The data wrangling pillar is a core feature providing a low code environment using a simple UI and a, comp a compact domain specific language, a syntax for defining the rules. It allows for rich in flight data wrangling functions, uh, such as allowing data to be combined, enriched, or disaggregated in real time per your client's needs with little to no development effort. Data can also be geographically distributed to remote servers with the click of a button. This can all be done in real time with no need to, uh, to restart any process. Data wrangling also allows for different cadence of data in terms of delivery, such as throttled or conflated flow, uh, or even delayed feeds as well. Finally, the data distribution layer. Uh, it's, it securely distributes the data to any number of clients with upwards of 80% bandwidth reduction on the, on the egress. All of this can be deployed in your data centers, in any cloud, or as a hybrid of both, catering for both pub sub streaming applications and request response clients. So if I may, let's just take a quick look at some architectures. Here is an architecture of old. 
Within any given enterprise, there will be many systems catering for a diverse user base over a multitude of different networks. This is not only difficult to manage, but it means that the enterprise presents many points of exposure or attack to the outside world. This could be denial of service attacks, buffer overflows, replay attacks, or any, any other type of attack that has already been proved, proven in the world. With a modern architecture, data is held centrally in a data model and a single resilient platform on the edge is responsible for client management and secure efficient data delivery. I'm sure that we can all agree that this is a much neater and simpler and therefore more secure architecture. Here we will present some of the features that help Diffusion secure your platforms and your data. We've mentioned Diffusion single point of access, but in terms of controlling access, each client is given permissions to access only the data that it needs. By default, no access is available, so it must be proactively granted in order to access any data. Thus, there is no open-ended default permissions. That's a central prerequisite for any secure system. By default, the system is closed. It has to be opened for each user. Within Diffusion, there are different levels of permissions. Users must be given select access to even know about the data, to even know it exists, otherwise it's hidden. They must be given read access to subscribe, write access to publish to it, and update to change the structure. This sample topic tree here shows how data can be granted in green. Uh, the read access has been removed in red, and data has been hidden entirely from clients because they have no select access. Another core feature uh, in Diffusion is its ability to control client subscriptions from the server side. Subscriptions can be switched on and off on demand programmatically. This can be for a single client or groups of clients. Furthermore, all client server communication with Diffusion is via a proprietary protocol, including sequence numbers, which prevents replay attacks. Replay attacks can't happen because A, the protocol is proprietary, and B, the sequence numbers ensure it never happens. Then this brings us to Diffusion's concept of session trees. Uh, with session trees, client sessions can be grouped such that they inherit attributes in a hierarchical fashion. These attributes can be defined on demand as needed. This allows for entire geographies or brands to be managed in a simple yet efficient way. Here is an example of a session tree using my own property that I have called region. Now, any number of properties can be defined or combined to make a managing a global user base very simple, yet efficient and effective. So let us take a, a look at how Diffusion helps you secure and manage access to your platform and data. This diagram represents the overall architecture used by Diffusion for managing a user base access in the platform. Each request coming in from the left, uh, it can come in from any connection, is passed to what is called an authentication handler where your custom logic is defined. This may include in checking an internal system or any other means to decide whether the access should be granted. Uh, requests may be approved, denied, or an authentication handler can abstain and delegate to another authentication handler in a chain. So we can chain these together uh, so we can access multiple systems and so forth to decide whether the client request should be approved. This design empowers you to take full control over who can access what and when. Crucially, it means that a security by design approach is instilled from the outset. Now let's dig a little bit deeper into authentication and how it is enforced. If we've mentioned the core process responsible for this is the authentication handler. These can be invoked before session establishment or after. Uh, for example, if some retrospective setup is required after successful connection. And um, we've mentioned that they can be chained together with uh, three possible outcomes, approve, deny, or abstain to the next in the chain. Um, crucially, the authentication handler can access properties defined on the session, or indeed add new properties to the session as well. 
Furthermore, client properties can be scrutinized, uh, properties defined by the client. They can be checked on the server side as well. This might include geolocation or IP information or any other attribute that is useful to your administrators. Since the, uh, since the authentication handler is calling your code, it can be used to access any system or technology. Finally, here is a configuration example showing before and after authentication handlers being defined statically on the server. Importantly, however, these can be registered and amended programmatically at any time with no need to restart any process. After authentication comes authorization. Now the session is established, what actions are we allowed to perform? A key feature here is the session property listener, which executes your code every time a session is opened, closed, or updated. So every time someone is logged on and so forth, you, you, you will have code invoked. You can do something about that. You will know it's happened. Each session can be defined to have one or many roles, and roles can inherit from other roles, allowing a logical organization of your user base. The four core permissions are select, which is to even know the data exists, read to subscribe to it, write to publish, and update to modify the topic. Permissions can be applied to an absolute topic or all subtopics underneath. Here is an example of the console interface that allows administrators to manage user permissions. Of course, all of this is also programmatically uh, exposed via APIs. And the crucial point on permissions is that permissions changes are applied in real time. And that means that it's instant. So if a client has an open subscription and then their permission is granted, the data will immediately start to flow. Equally, if the permission, if the permission is removed, the data will stop flowing immediately. There is no need to restart any process server or client or for clients to resubscribe. No need for recaching of profiles either. So now we'll just have a quick look at third-party integration. This slide just takes us through some of the technologies that have been used to govern diffusion clients across an enterprise. So first we have single sign-on used extensively in capital markets for governing a huge, uh, huge employee base. We also have clients using Microsoft's Active Directory and others are using Kerberos for authentic uh, authenticating their users. We have clients that use JSON web tokens to define the, the claims that, are, that you, each user can do. Others have written to what's called SAML, a good example is Okta, the Okta protocol. And because it's an API, any other third party identity provider or internally built permissioning system can be used to, to govern the diffusion user base. So moving on, we're going to have a look at the OWASP 10 um, and the vulnerabilities that it has highlighted and how diffusion can neutralize those. So first of all, what, what is the OWASP 10? It is a generally accepted consensus of the most important vulnerabilities to address when designing and building secure platforms. It's an open standard. Uh, the link is in the page here. Uh, feel free to check it out, um, if you will. So we're just going to quickly go through the, the 10 vulnerabilities. There are two OWASP 10s. There's one for web applications, another for APIs. We're just going to quickly go through, through the web one on how diffusion uh, neutralizes each. So first of all, the, the first vulnerability is injections. As I've mentioned, client-server communication is via closed proprietary binary protocol. If a message is too large, it's immediate, the sessions are terminated. So there is no possibility of injections between uh, diffusion uh, servers and clients. Broken authentication. Uh, we've mentioned the authentication handler, whose logic is defined by our clients. Every session is given a unique ID for the life of the session, and the sessions can be controlled from the server i.e. terminated if needed. Sensitive data exposure. All diffusion sessions are uh, uh, shared data over TLS securely, and there is no persistent passwords in plain text and uh, nothing, no, nothing sensitive logged to disk. XML external entities. Although diffusion can be used for sharing XML uh, content, there is no attempt to resolve the content and so forth. So therefore there is no exposure to XML external entities. And broken access control. 
the Diffusion API provides a dedicated client handler callback, which is invoked any time that user properties are uh, user permissions or properties are modified. So this means that you have a central server system that is is uh, pr uh, notified every time there are any changes to a client's uh, permissions. Uh, the next one is security misconfigurations. Diffusion uh, keeps up to date with the most secure versions of all of our dependencies, which are very well documented. Uh, default configurations are also well documented and there no, no uh, sensitive information is logged to disk. Cross-site scripting, as I've mentioned previously, uh, uh, the values are populated and published and consumed by the API, but there is no attempt to resolve contents like, like a, a cross-site attack. Insecure deserialization, Diffusion supports a validate values property that ensures that the data being published is of the correct type on the way in, otherwise it is not published. Using components with known vulnerabilities, third-party components are documented in metadata uh, with each release. Um, so all admins can check this against uh, the latest uh, common vulnerability and exploit feeds. And then finally, insufficient logging and monitoring. All traffic is based on secure web sockets, so therefore all incoming and outgoing connections are known and can be monitored with standard host or network um, intrusion detection systems. For logging and monitoring, JMX and MBeams are both supported. Now the other, that's that's the first OWASP 10 focusing on web applications. There is another OWASP 10 on APIs. There is a lot of overlap uh, with the web with the web OWASP 10, so I'll just pick out the ones that are different. Lack of resources and rate limiting. Diffusion has a built-in per consumer queue that ensures timely reliable delivery of data to every client. If a queue is getting close to its uh, size, then server-side applications can make a proactive decision to start invoking, for example, conflation or throttling. So in this way, it is possible to deploy clients or server-side applications that are monitoring your client's usage and prevent any form of denial of service attack and so forth by consuming too much. This is all within uh, the control on the Diffusion server. And then broken function level uh, authorization, as we've mentioned, going through the, the uh, authorization piece of the different levels of permissions, all uh, roles are defined in a hierarchy of model, all programmatically accessible to be integrated with your internal systems. Permissions can be granted and revoked at any time. And the final one on the API then is the mass assignments where properties can be added or changed, if you like, on, on objects and so forth. Um, the only way that diffu uh, the diffusion topics can be modified is with users with admin privileges. There is no content that is bound to a strict schema or attempt to resolve content, as I've mentioned, and internal under the hood, any objects are well protected from user inputs, so there's no risk here whatsoever. So for both OWASP 10s, diffusion very, uh, very easily negates the vulnerabilities that the standard has outlined. So. This slide then brings us to essentially what we call security mandates, the, the, the mandates of a CISO across any enterprise. Um, the slide aims to highlight the sheer breadth of scope that any enterprise must consider when it comes to security. From managing your users, to securing your data, to ensuring your platforms are safe, to keeping the lights on, it is clear that the remit is large. Diffusion can assist you with managing all of these. And in this last section, we will then look at the how Diffusion secures your data when it is in flight, being sent over any network, private, public, or other. In an increasingly decentralized, cloud-driven world, this has become ever more important. So what is TLS? Um, it has been, it is a, crypto, uh, a means for uh, in, ensuring privacy and integrity of data over public channels. It's been around since, well, it's a 1999 as a successor to the SSL 3.0. It uses encryption for privacy and hashing for integrity to make sure the data hasn't changed in transit. And we'll just briefly look at how that works. This is important as we dig into the details of TLS and why Diffusion provides extra security. So initially, the client and server agree what cipher suite they're going to use to talk to each other. They then agree a shared secret, essentially a, a, a key that will be used for ongoing traffic. 
The private key is used to uh, secure all traffic going over the, over the channel. It is used by the sender to encrypt data and by the receiver to decrypt. And then hash codes are used by the receiver to make sure that the payload hasn't been modified or whatever in transit, which is a common vector for attack. So here is a quick overview of the different conversations required to establish every secure client server session. So this could be, think of how many client sessions you may have. This could be thousands, uh, happens thousands of times a second. As you can see, TLS 1.2 requires multiple back and forth, which presents, uh, presents malicious actors with extra opportunities to perform an attack. Uh, whereas TLS 1.3 is much simpler. Um, with this in mind, this brings us to the list of cipher suites supported by TLS 1.2. As you can see, there are 37 cipher suites defined within the standard. Visibly, there are many techniques uh, uh, by these, visibly there are many techniques used by these 37 cipher suites, uh, but some of the techniques have been clearly shown to be exploitable, either in the wild or in a controlled environment. So let's highlight them. So on your screen now, you will see highlighted in red, each of these has been shown to be vulnerable to some form of exploit. So how does TLS 1.3 protect against this? But as, as we can see, TLS 1.3 only supports five cyber suites, none of which are currently known to be vulnerable. But what are the improvements in more detail? First of all, all, all insecure ciphers have been removed. There is no RSA anymore for key exchange. This is vulnerable to an attack called uh, Blickenbacker or the return of Blickenbacker's Oracle threat robot is the name of the attack. So RSA has been removed entirely. There is no reuse of static keys. All keys are what are called ephemeral. They're, they, they're, they're not the same from session to session. Previously, it would be the same keys used over and over again, which means that if you're listening for a long period of time, you can derive the keys. But with TLS 1.3, there are no static keys. They are all ephemeral, which provide what's called perfect forward secrecy or PFS. There is no CBC mode of operation. So this uh, CBC is known to be vulnerable to buffer overflows or padded oracles uh, on downgraded legacy encryption or Poodle. Next, there is no renegoti re renegotiation of parameters. This is used by attacks, attackers to execute uh, DDoS or distributed denial of service attacks since it's easy to request, but it's expensive for the server to address. But this is no longer allowed in TLS 1.3. And finally, then downgrade attacks. Downgrade attacks are prevented because the client and the server are always negotiating the most secure protocol version and cryptogra cryptographic parameters. So even if there's a man in the middle uh, watching what's going on, uh, they will, will always be using the most secure uh, ciphers for, uh, for communication. So what has this got to do with the fusion? Diffusion provides full control to administrators to define which cipher suites the server to client's communication should use. This allows sysadmins to react swiftly to any new vulnerabilities that are exposed. And this is, this is like a, a constantly changing landscape. It's happening all the time. The administrators of the fusion can, can literally see that a new attack has been identified. They can take action and secure their systems, their data, and their customers. And furthermore, as the world races towards embracing quantum computing, new cipher suite standards are in the processes of being defined. As they arise, Diffusion will support them and our customers' platforms will remain safe, even in a post-quantum world. I'm quite sure the, uh, the CISOs out there will agree that there are not many technologies that can provide such future-proof assurances to your platforms and customers. So to close, um, we have ascertained that security has become an imperative in today's increasingly connected yet distributed world. Data in transit, ensuring private, safe communication uh, and transmission of your data via TLS 1.3. Access management, provisioning who can access your platforms and when. Data governance and audit reporting, controlling what content each user can access down to the very finest level 
a monitoring usage for ongoing report reporting and monitoring. Ensuring that your firm stays up to date with the most secure technologies. That will include Java, operating system versions, or any other third party components. And protecting your data with the latest TLS 1.3 Cypher Suites and beyond when TLS 1.3 becomes legacy. So with that in mind, I will leave you with the thought to secure and future-proof your platforms today. Uh, Diffusion is available to download today, or a service can be created within minutes in Diffusion Cloud. And with that, I thank you for listening.